everyone, Mr. Ray here. I want to go through a couple of singular triangle proofs with you. These are really not that bad, a little bit tricky to get started on compared to a standard triangle congruence or CPCTC kind of a proof. But once you get the hang of them, they're pretty easy. So the what will tip you off that it's a similar triangle proof is if you see a statement like this, prove a proportion. Right, so think about proportions. Where do proportions come from? Similar figures, right? We can write a ratio of corresponding sides. So if you see something like this, proving a proportion, or another statement I'll show you later, that's going to be a clue that you want to look for similar triangles. The first thing that you need to do is identify the two triangles that you have to find. So in a picture like this, it's fairly straightforward, but I'm going to walk you through the procedure anyway so you see what I would recommend you do. First, you're going to want some colors. And I'm going to look at each of these four individual pieces of this proportion. And I'm going to find them in the picture and use that to figure out what triangles I need. So I see FM, I'm going to go to the picture and make FM red. Now I look at the next piece, NH. So I'm going to ask myself this question. Could NH possibly be in the same triangle as MF? Well, hopefully you can see that there's no way that can happen, right? NH is in fact only in this triangle over here, and that's not the same triangle that MF is in. So that means I'm going to give NH a different color. I'll use blue since I got blue and red show up pretty nicely on the screen here. So FM is red, NH is blue. That's going to be my other triangle. And then I go to the next piece here, FP. Well, I go back to the triangle and I look at FP. And I ask myself, can FP be in the same triangle as this red piece? Well, obviously it can, right? FMP. But I also want to ask myself, can FP be in the triangle with the blue piece? Here you can see that they cannot be, right? FP is a different triangle than this blue one is. So that means that FM is going to be red. Excuse me, FP is going to be red. Now, if FP could have been in the blue triangle and the red triangle, then I would just reserve judgment and I'd move on to the next piece before I decide what color to make it. In this case, though, FP was red, so that's going to leave me with pH blue, which should be pretty clear from the picture because here's your pH right over there. And so what you've got now is the two triangles we're interested in. This triangle over here, which I'll highlight in blue, and the other triangle on the left, which I'll highlight in red. If we can get these two triangles to be similar, then we can write a proportion using these corresponding sides, and that's going to be how we get that proportion. So once you figure out your triangles, now you're going to just go on like with a regular proof. You mark up your pictures, see what you got. So let's see, I see that we have perpendicular lines, PM perpendicular to FG. So that means that these two angles over here are both right angles. Of course, that's the one I'm really going to be interested in. So maybe, in fact, I won't even highlight that other one. I'll just go ahead and make this one a right angle. And over here, I have PN also perpendicular to GH, which means this is going to be a right angle. So clearly, those angles are right angles. Maybe I'll number them one and two and they're going to be congruent. So that's my first pair of angles in these triangles. Let's go ahead and write that up. That way we'll have that piece. So we have PM perpendicular to FG. We also have PN perpendicular to GH. And that's of course given. Perpendicular lines give me right angles, which means angle one and angle two are both right angles. Remember, you always want to state that angles are right angles before you say that they're congruent. That's because perpendicular lines form right angles. And then in the third step here, sorry this is a little bit messy today, angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 and that's because well all right angles are congruent. So now in step 3 we have one pair of corresponding angles congruent in these triangles. Now we just have to find a second pair to say that they're similar. Well take a look at this other given, FG congruent to GH. FG is this entire side GH is this entire side. That was a little bit more crooked than I'd prefer. So let me just grab another color here so they kind of stand out a little bit. So this piece is congruent to this piece. Well, it might not be obvious immediately how that's going to help us, but in fact, that tells you that the large triangle is isosceles. And if it's isosceles, that means opposite these congruent sides, we're going to have congruent angles. So this angle over here, right, angle F in the big triangle, is congruent to this angle over here angle H in the big triangle. But those are angles in our little triangles as well, aren't they? So that's going to be our second pair of angles, making these triangles angle, angle similar. So let's go ahead and write that up there. I'll just scroll down a little bit. We have FG congruent to GH. And that, of course, was given. And what that's going to allow me to do is say that angle F is congruent to angle H. There's only one angle at F and H, so I don't need to name them differently or number them. And that is because in a triangle, angles opposite congruent sides are congruent. 
So at this point, we've got not one, but two pairs of angles congruent, and we're ready to go ahead and name these triangles similar. So just like with congruent triangles, we want to make sure that when we name them, we name them in the correct order. We have to name them with corresponding parts matching up. So if I call the first triangle FMP, that means I'm going from the one tick angle to the right angle to the unknown angle. So then the other triangle, I have to go the same order, from the one tick angle to the right angle to the unknown angle. So that would be triangle HNP. And so since those two triangles have two angles that are corresponding congruent, we know that these are going to be similar triangles. I'll just run this down here. And that'll be our step five in the proof. Oh, excuse me, that'll be step six. And the reason is simply angle, angle, triangle similarity. And now really all we have left to do is write that proportion. Now in this case, they gave you the proportion, but if they didn't, let's just go through how to set it up. You begin with any one of those four pieces, say FM. And then FM is in the red triangle. So you look to who FM corresponds with in the blue triangle. Notice the placement of FM. It is in between the right angle and the one tick angle. So in between the right angle and the one tick angle, I find segment NH. That means FM corresponds with NH. Now, when I write that as a ratio, that's a ratio of corresponding sides in these two triangles. And since the ratio of corresponding sides in similar triangles is always the same, that means that that is equivalent to the ratio of FP, another side in the red triangle, oops, FP, over the side that FP corresponds with. Again, notice one tick to the no tick, right? That's this side. So one tick to the no tick, that's pH. And there you have the proportion that we're looking for. The ratio of corresponding sides, red to blue, is equal to the ratio of another pair of corresponding sides, red to blue. And again, this would be our final reason in this proof. Oops, I missed it. So I'm just going to drag this down. And the reason for this is a little bit similar to corresponding parts of congruent triangles congruent. Right, so if you think back to congruent triangle proofs, once you get the triangles congruent, you would say CPCTC. Now we don't have congruent triangles, we have similar triangles. And there's something similar to be said, no pun intended. We can say that the corresponding sides, and we write this one out because it doesn't come up as much, corresponding sides of similar triangles. right? Now, if these were congruent triangles, the corresponding sides would simply be congruent. But since they're similar, they're not congruent, they are in proportion. And there you have it. Right? So there's our proof. Corresponding sides of similar triangles are in proportion. And that's a nice example of a similar triangle proof. Right? So I'm going to flip to another example now. You can download both of these in the video description. And this one will be just a little bit more interesting. Not, not too tough, but a little bit more interesting. So again, we have this picture here. And, <clears throat> excuse me. So we've got the picture here. And my first order of business is, again, to figure out what I need. Now, that might look like a really strange proof statement. So where it's going to come from is, if you remember the last proof, I'll just flip back for one second, ended in a proportion, right? We had this proportion here. Well, what can you do with proportions? You can cross multiply, right? The product of these two pieces has to equal the product of these two pieces. And that's how we're going to end up with a statement like this. It's going to come from cross multiplying in a proportion. But that's going to be the very last thing we do. First, we have to figure out what triangles do we need. So I'm going to go through that same process as before. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say, OK, EA. I'm going to make EA red in my picture. Oops, there we go. EA is red. And then I'm going to look at CB. And I'm going to ask myself, is it possible that CB is a side in the same triangle as EA. In other words, is there a triangle that has AE as a side and also has CB as a side? Hopefully you can see the answer there is no. Now, you may be thinking, wait a minute, what about triangle ABC? That has CB as a side and EA is over here on the side. But that's not good enough. It's only part of the side. I need it to be the entire side. So these have to be in different triangles, which means CB is going to have to be a different color. So I will make it blue. So I got my CB blue over here. So EA is red, CB is blue, and now I'm going to move on to AF. And I ask the same question. Could AF be in the same triangle as CB? That is the blue triangle. So hopefully you can see there's no way, right? These, these two lines cross right there, so they're not meeting at a point. So if AF can't be in the blue triangle, then AF must be in the red triangle. So AF is going to be red. 
And then by process of elimination, that should make DB blue, but let's just run through it and make sure that works. DB is over here. It's only part of the side of the red triangle, so that clearly won't work. DB is gonna have to be part of the blue triangle. And now you can see the two triangles that we need. This guy, DCB, and this guy, EAF. So maybe I'll go ahead and just finish out outlining those. Uh, let's see, so I'll make, here's the AEF triangle. And then here will be my blue triangle. Okay, so we gotta get those two triangles to be similar, which means we're gonna go to our givens now and start looking for information. So the first thing I see is that AC is congruent to CB. So hopefully that kind of reminds you of what happened in that last proof, right? We had these two large pieces that were congruent, and that's gonna mean that this big triangle ABC is isosceles, which means this angle is congruent to this angle. Now this angle I could just call A, nothing wrong with that, but I can't call this one B because this is also angle B, right? So I'm gonna to have to number that one, and then if you wanna number them both because it just bothers you to have a letter and a number, that's fine, or you could also call this like angle DBC, or A, B, C, you could name this one with three letters. I prefer to use numbers because I don't like to write a lot of letters. So that's one pair of angles we have congruent. Uh, let's just go ahead and add that to the proof right away. So in step one here, we can say that A, C is congruent to C, B. So that'll be given. And that allows us to say that angle one is congruent to angle two. The reason for that, remember, is that in a triangle, angles opposite congruent sides are congruent. With the one pair of angles down, we're going to turn our attention to the next pair of givens here, right? So CD perpendicular to AB. And just like last time, if CD is perpendicular to AB, that's going to have to be a right angle there. And if FE is perpendicular to AC, that's going to have to be a right angle over there. So I've got two more angles. I can name them three and four to make it easy to talk about them. And they're right angles, which makes them congruent. That's also the second pair of angles that I needed congruent in my triangles. So I have CD perpendicular to AB. I also have FE perpendicular to AC, given. That makes angles 3 and 4 right angles, because again, perpendicular lines form right angles. And then that means that those angles are congruent, because all right angles are congruent. So with our two pairs of angles congruent, now we're ready to write the statement about the triangles. So again, I want to keep the order together. So if I call the first triangle, triangle AEF, similar to. So notice I went from A to E to F. That's the one tick angle to the right angle to the unmarked angle. So in the blue triangle, I have to do the same thing. One tick to the right to the unmarked. That would be D, B, C. So it's going to be similar to triangle D, B, C. And that is, of course, just angle, angle, triangle similarity. Let me grab these and bring them down here a little bit. So that would be step six, angle, angle, triangle similarity. And now that we've got the triangle similar, we're ready to write our proportion. So pick any one of these four. It really doesn't matter which one. I always just like to start with the first. It seems easiest to me. And I say EA over. So EA is in the red triangle, and it is in between the one tick and the right angle, right? In between these two angles I know. So I go to the blue triangle, and who is in between the two angles I know? Side DB. That means EA corresponds with DB. That's a ratio of corresponding sides. Has to be the same as the ratio of any other corresponding sides. So I go back to the red triangle. EA I already have, still need AF. So AF goes there. And that is congruent to, or excuse me, corresponding to. So notice AF goes from the one tick angle to the unknown angle. So in the blue triangle, I look for the one tick, I go to the unknown, and there's BC or CB. So there's the proportion that I want to use in this set of triangles. That's going to be the next step in my proof, step seven. I'm going to get this proportion here. And my reason will be, again, corresponding sides of similar triangles are in proportion. So the last thing we need to do is take that proportion and actually use it to generate this proof statement, right, that we're looking for here, that EA times CB equals AF times DB. Well, let me take that proof statement and just kind of put it down here for a minute so we can look at it. 
All right, so this is what we're trying to prove, that EA times CB is equal to AF times DB. Well, take a look at that there. EA times CB, isn't that the product of these two here, right? EA times CB, and AF times DB, that's the product of these two right here. So this proof statement that we're actually looking for is simply what you get if you cross multiply with the proportion we just wrote. So in step eight, we're going to go ahead and just write that statement, right, as if we cross multiplied. Now, uh, I'm kind of, I, would, I just copy and pasted that. I generally don't like that notation as much with the dot. I prefer to use some parentheses, so maybe I'll just go ahead and add those in. Like I prefer to write, uh, ooh, that was a strange thing. I prefer to write EA times CB, right, equals AF times DB. I think that's a little bit more clear what you mean than the dot. But either way, however you write it, the reason is going to be the same. The reason is that in a proportion, right, in a proportion, now it's important that you say that because you have to establish what you're talking about, just like we say in a triangle, right, or in a quadrilateral. In a proportion, the product of the means equals the product of the extremes. All right, so in a proportion, the product of the means equals the product of the extremes. And just so you know what I'm talking about there, in when we're dealing with proportions, we have some names for these different pieces, right? So the the means, right? The means are what we call these two pieces on the inside here. So um, these guys, right? These are called the means, and the extremes are what we call these other pieces. Right? So these are the extremes. So the means are the bottom left, top right. The extremes are the top left bottom right. So that's just a little bit of terminology that we have and that's how we name it when we're doing a proof that the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. So I think I can maybe get the whole thing on there. Perfect. There we go. So there you have it. Two examples of how similar triangle proofs work. They're pretty much all the same. The first order of business is to use your proof statement to figure out which triangles you need. Once you have them identified, you go ahead and go about getting not one but two pairs of corresponding angles congruent. That lets you say the triangles are similar and then you can write a proportion and cross multiply. So I hope you found that helpful. There's the first one right there. Again, you can download both of these in the video description so you can follow along and keep it for your notes and practice. Hope you found this video helpful. If you like it, please subscribe, like, comment, and of course, if there's anything you'd like me to do in particular, drop me an email, or if you happen to be in my class, you can just ask. Have a great day.